I was really keen to to have a slot within the conference to talk about this particular project that, that we've embarked upon. Uh, it's one that I've talked a lot about <laughs> in team meetings and, and the like. It's been, been one that's given me a lot of a lot of joy over the last sort of few months when I've been involved with Percy Headley School. Uh, so it's really nice, a real privilege to get an opportunity to sort of go through it and talk about it, particularly obviously with Andy and Barry who have been doing the bulk of the work <laughs> and have been so key to it. So um, it's it's a case study, I suppose, in many ways is what we're sort of looking at and, and sort of certainly links in with, with you know, those sorts of system wide approaches to PBS and particularly links into some key things around the importance of, of sort of buy in within organisations, which we're going to be focusing in upon a little bit um, as we reflect upon it. But we just thought it'd be it's a really sort of useful case study to share, really, because it's been so sort of um, successful and enjoyable, I think. So I'll get the slides up and we'll, we'll let Barry and, and Andy introduce themselves. Um, hang on a minute, let me. Fabulous. So hopefully you can see the slides. Um, I just minimize the chat. So I'll introduce myself and then I'll hand over to, to Barry and Andy who, who will then introduce themselves. <laughs> we have got a, bit, a slide in a couple of slides time where we're going to introduce the school as well. But uh, for those of you who don't know, my name's Hannah and I'm the Associate Director at PBS UK. Uh, and I've been, been working alongside these folks in, in, in relation to the sort of system wide implementation project at Percy Headley School. Um, that's me, Barry, Andy. Barry Reid, Deputy Head Teacher at Percy Headley School. Fabulous. Uh, my name's Andy Hall. Um, I've worked in uh, special needs for about 10 years as a, as a class teacher um, and a behaviour trainer, and I'm PBS lead at Percy Headley School. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so what we're going to be talking about here today is this, this process of um, training and implementation at Percy Headley School. So we're going to start with a bit of an introduction to Percy Headley School itself, uh, which Barry and, and Andy will give to us, and a little bit around the rationale for why we've done what we've done. Um, I'm going to be introducing the training, you know, actually what we delivered and how we delivered it, um, and then how we sort of use that to build on, our, on our, the development of our system at, at Percy Headley, Headley School and that PBS implementation. We're going to reflect a little bit around some of the outcomes, um, both individually and more generally, sort of throughout the system, and think a little bit about what we've learned as well, what we've actually, what we've, we've taken from this and you know, both for the for the school, but also for myself as a sort of PBS practitioner, what we've what we've learned from this approach and what maybe is applicable to to you folks who are at home or on the beach, <laughs> listening to us talking, uh, and of course we're going to leave some some time at the end for some questions as well. So hopefully, you folks, there'll be some things that will jump into your head that you're interested in asking. So do feel free to to um, ask anything you like. So starting over to you guys. <laughs> Introduce Thank us. you very much. Okay. Cheers. Hi, so yeah, I'm Barry, deputy head teacher at Percy Early School. So I'm going to turn my camera off during the presentation, but I will turn it back on again for any answer to answer any questions that people might. So we are an all through special school, uh, including post 16, and we're based in the northeast of England, providing person centered education and support to around 160 pupils with a wide range of needs. We are well resourced school both in facilities and on-site therapy offer. So um, our therapy consists of around 50 therapists, including physiotherapists, occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, and also an educational psychologist. And our teachers, therapists, and support staff work together in the planning, delivery, and the assessment of all elements of the pupils' education and support, which has over time developed a highly knowledgeable and skilled team of staff that support our pupils. Next slide, please. Our rationale for the training really was born in our internal evaluation of our provision of behaviour, which we worked together to establish our strengths and our areas for development. Before joining Percy Early School in 2019, I'd already had um, training in PBS and was a PBS coach, which had equipped me with the knowledge required to accurately assess our current position. And for those who may not be in this position, I believe PBS UK actually carry out organisation reviews of positive um, behaviour support. So if you don't have that uh, training, uh, you could also involve PBS UK there to help you to establish those strengths and weaknesses. 
I suppose one of our most significant strengths has always been how well our team develop our pupils' emotional awareness and their knowledge and skills of how to self-manage and self-regulate their emotions. Um, as with all schools, there were areas where we felt we could improve further. And for us at Percy Eddy School, we want to improve our approach to gathering and analysing information about behaviour to ensure any action taken was data informed and based on functional understanding of behaviour. That was really our primary aim, but as leaders, we were also aware of the SEND review. We knew that the proposed changes could mean we see an increase in pupils attending our school who required more targeted support with their behaviour. As leaders, we want to get ahead of this curve, ensure our team were trained to, the, to best support this change if and when it happened. Next slide, please. Our self-evaluation had helped us to clarify what we needed to improve and we knew um, what we wanted our provision for behaviour to look like, but there was further preparation needed before we could get started. And the next step, and in my opinion, the most crucial was selecting the right staff, or, or should I say the right leaders to drive forward the change. And it was important too, is that the team we formed represented the specialisms in our staff team, doing so would lead to a strong collective knowledge within that team. We also knew we needed to ensure the people we chose had a strong presence in school, that they had influence within the team to ensure the success of the change. So that's what we did. We formed a team consistent of staff covering almost the full range of staff groups. This included learning support assistants, higher level learning support assistants, teachers and therapists, and all of which were key influence within the, the staff team. Before we contacted PBS UK, our team had received some training in positive behaviour support from another provider, which was effective in the acquisition of knowledge. But in my opinion, it was less effective in preparing our staff for applying the knowledge that they'd gained. We felt without support with, this, with the application of this knowledge, the implementation would likely fail. It would be like asking or telling somebody how to drive a car who had never driven a car before and then expect them to drive without lessons, most would fail. To get the implementation right, we needed some further guidance on applying what we had learned and support really also in defining our processes and procedures. So that was the point which we reached out to PVS UK to discuss our needs and agree in a package, which Hannah will talk through next. Over to you, Hannah. Fabulous. Sorry, I muted. <laughs> Take a moment there, just a mute. Um, so yes, yeah, so so Barry and, and the team got in touch to to sort of commission a little bit of input, and it was going to be very training focused sort of initially. Although we're really keen when we when we are commissioned for training, that that's not all we do, and and we don't want to just be one of those organisations just throws out a load of training and expects then that to result in practice change and, and implementation. So um, one of the things that we we quite often reflect upon actually in, in, in relation to the implementation of our training is who we're training. And, and that was right from the offset, in fact, from the, the point in which we became involved, that, that the job, that task had already been done for us in many ways by, by the, the team at Percy Headley, because they'd identified this, this fantastic team of individuals who, who all had sort of good background knowledge in PBS and were in a range of different positions and, and sort of areas of influence within the school. Um, but just to reflect on, on some of our what we found, I suppose, in, in other training projects, um, you know, we, we embarked upon a large training project uh, back in 2020, uh, sort of within the southwest of England, um, funded by NHS England. And, and we were able through that to identify some of those key factors that you know, a participant within that training needs to have in order for it to, it to actually result in positive impacts to the people that they're supporting. And that's where we sort of came up with this, this acronym KITE. So one of the Key first things is, is knowledge. You know, these, these PBS coaches within Percy Headley, it was really key that they had a thorough understanding of the PBS values, theory and process. So they already had a really good foundation of this in actual fact, because of it, that they'd already had some previous training, which was very theoretical. Um, so that was fantastic, a great foundation. And obviously, you know, with any, within any setting, we'd hope that the training would, would be able to provide people with that very first important attribute. Um, the second area is influence, and this is something that sometimes is a little bit more problematic. We need our PBS coaches to be able to affect change within their environment, uh, and very often you find that's quite difficult if that person is in a position where they're 
maybe a little bit more removed from practice or removed from the general team. Um, uh, you know, it's all very well having someone who's got all of that knowledge, but if they're not able to actually exert any influence over that practice, then, then it's, you know, they're not the right people to be focusing the training upon. That time is a really important one as well. And unfortunately, you know, we, we don't deliver training that's, that's particularly sort of easy for people to, to participate in. We ask a lot of, of participants and we know that the PBS process is something that takes time and can be resource intensive. And, and you know, we need to sort of recognize that and the PBS coaches need to have that protected time to conduct, you know, relevant assessments, to review data, to develop and, and supervise the implementation of plans. And understanding of the resources that are required for this process is really, really key to its success. Um, and the final one is exposure, which I think links in quite closely with influence in some ways. And that's that PBS co the coaches need to be present in order to drive on, on that practice leadership. So they need to be people that are, are present within the day-to-day -day sort of workings of that particular setting. So, um, so we, we spoke about this in our very first sort of meeting when we were talking about the implementation of this training with, with the team. Um, and it it was really clear having sort of been the person who's led on this training that the, the right people have been selected and that's been really really key um i mean you know the research tells us as well it's really important that we're training the right people in the right way and that we we sort of understand people's strengths and people's difficulties and, and target those effectively um and that that we don't just sort of focus in upon classroom-based training and and not think about how that that turns into practice that turns into to behavior change for those staff members implementation needs to be a really important part of that training training process and it needs to feed through to that that practice leadership process um, building on pbs capacity at an organizational level is essential and pbs training should be should address capacity building result, resulting in systems change not just change for the individual it's a really important part of that system-wide implementation so um so that was sort of really key first step of this process was identifying the right people to be to be receiving this training and, and making sure that they had the time and the resources available to them to to make the most of it really to, to sort of um, move it forward positively so so we, we embarked upon our training and actually there were there were some different phases of training and we're not at the end of this journey either I think that's important to reflect upon we're not talking about sort of we come to the finish point and reflecting back upon it we're actually still on this journey now and and we've still got quite a long way to go, I think, in many ways as well. But the bulk of the training has been, has been carried out, has been commissioned and has been carried out um, sort of from the, I think it was the middle of last year we began this process. And the very first stage of the process was our functional assessment training course, um, which is, I almost like to sort of just describe it as a bit of a role play it, that, that sort of fits before the next step of the training where, where participants are, are given a case study, so the Percy Headley team had a case study by the name of Molly, who they grew, they grew really attached to as they were going through the two days, because it basically takes them through the process of, of you know, evaluating the information that's been gathered from Molly um, and pulling it together into a really nice triangulation and formulation process. Um, so they, they form their functional hypotheses based on that information that they've gathered. But what they then do is they think about what they do with that information and they start to think about what would the top three proactive strategies be for, for Molly and, and how would we implement it and embed it in the, within the context that, that they're given for Molly as well. So it's, it's a really interactive um, training course that, that you know, the team did fantastically. In. Um, then they moved on to our PBS equipped course, which I'll talk about a little bit more on the next slide. But this is four sessions over approximately 10 weeks. And this is the bit where we get really practice based. This is a really important part of the process and in, in, in terms of the journey that Percy Headley have been on. Um, so this course takes place over four sessions, which around about three weeks in between each session. So around about 10 weeks or so. Um, and the way that we did it, we don't always do it this way, but the way that we did it within Percy Headley, which worked really well, was, was actually that they worked together in small groups rather than individually. So quite often the way we run it is that each individual works with a focused person and goes away and, and sort of develops their own plans individually. But we felt actually it would work even better within the, the coaching team that they'd established if that, that training took place in, in smaller groups. So each group had a focused person, a real life person, a real life um, student from the school. Um, and they were got sort of guided through the process, coached through the process of developing 
various plans for that individual. So PERMA plans, uh, a PBS plan, a skills plan, and, and really being able to evidence the implementation of that plan as they went through that process. So we worked through that PBS process. Tasks were set each session for participants to work on and implement. And I'll show you how the sessions were broken down in a sec. Um, we concluded with a, sort of, it was an add-on actually, um, in actual fact, I think a really important part to the wider process was that we identified a, a key core team within that team of coaches to be trained as trainers in delivering our one day PBS informed course. So it's sort of an introduction to PBS course. Um, and this is about getting that foundational knowledge within the wider staff team. We, were, we thought it was really key. It's, it's wonderful that we've got this team of coaches who are so, so skilled now in, in PBS approaches, but getting that, that general staff understanding throughout the wider team was a real priority. So, so getting some, some of those coaches skilled up to deliver that training was gonna be a really important part of the jigsaw puzzle, if you like. Um, so they've, they've been awarded a license to train for 12 months following completion of that training. Barry, so I just saw your hand was popped up. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just to there. sort of add <laughs> yeah. a little bit about the trainer trainer. So yeah. that's been really helpful. I think the most significant thing about the train the trainer course was the resources that we got to then deliver training. So we did, Andy and I sat down and we mapped out the train that would have to deliver and uh, mapping it out gave us an idea of the scope of what we'd have to develop. So I think that's um, something that, that's really helped us to speed things up and mm -hmm. get that training in place for staff was buying into that train the trainer course because we didn't then have to spend almost a year developing the resources because trying to find the time to develop resources for the full content would have been very tricky. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Barry. Yeah, that's... Um, so just because the PBS Equip course was the sort of the core part, I suppose, of what we provided, just to break down what, what this entailed, really, because some of you might be sort of wondering what it kind of looks like. Um, four sessions over 10 weeks, as I already alluded to, uh, working in small groups, developing a portfolio based around a focused student within the, the student population. Uh, we focused sort of initially within a very first session around quality of life. So we, we use the PERMA model at PBS UK. It's something that we use an awful lot in our our own practice with our own individuals that are on our caseloads and, um, and we sort of always advocate for its use and we've got some sort of templates that that we supported the, the participants to develop for their focus person so they developed a perma profile with the focus person as much as possible um, and from that identified a small action to implement for that individual uh, and we asked for evidence of, of that implementation. Um, and we also introduced some basic functional assessment tools within that session, which they, they went away and, and sort of collected data using. Uh, and they came back in, in day two with um, the morning spent sort of thinking about how we make sense of that information, how we make sense of that data and, and sort of form it into our, our functional hypotheses, have a better understanding of those individuals' behaviours. Um, and then a little bit of thinking around what we then do with that. You know, how do we use that information to actually develop a, a really good quality plan that we can go away and, and hopefully get implemented for the benefit of that individual. Um, session three was solely focused around skills teaching. So we focused on, on you know, task analysis, prompting, chaining, shaping and, and you know, identifying preferences. And, and we got each of the groups to think about their focus person and, and develop a, a skills plan based on that, that understanding some of which were the sort of focused around you know, functionally equivalent skills, so teaching an alternative way through which that person can meet that really important need. Um, but some of these skills were focused much more around just things that are going to improve people's lives and, and give people a sense of empowerment and achievement. Um, so they, they were fantastic, the skills plans that were developed. Uh, and then the very, very last session is focused around implementation. So what, what actually we can do with this stuff, how we actually put it into practice, working with a great big, enormous team of, of different people, um, how, we, how we get these plans embedded and implemented. So we looked at a coaching model um, known as the Eddy model. We talked about how we give feedback to, to team members. And they concluded in the afternoon of day four um, with presentations. So each of the, each of the groups um, delivered a presentation on the, the, the journey they've been on. Um, and and where they were going next as well with this process. They were absolutely fantastic presentations. It was a lovely afternoon. Uh, it was really wonderful to hear, you know, the progress that had been made in relation to the, each of those individuals. It wasn't all smooth running. They found it a challenge. We extended the deadline. So I don't, I don't think we ought to think, oh, this all went completely swimmingly. 
if you know there were challenges there were other demands for these individuals these these coaches sit within the school and so we extended the deadline we gave them a little bit longer because we really wanted them to be able to submit work that they were proud of and that was going to give you know actually positively influence those those focused students um so they were assessed by it's an assessed course they're assessed by a combined score uh, a portfolio that is submitted as a group and a presentation that takes place in a group pass markers 80 percent um these folks absolutely nailed it there's <laughs> an average score of 96.6 percent over the over the groups so um i, I wasn't surprised I, they've been fantastic throughout the process but it was really nice to sort of see how much work they'd done and the, the quality of that work was was outstanding so it was really clear to me that the right people had been put forward into this process and that they'd had the support they needed within that setting um, and I think also important to reflect on the fact that we didn't have a single dropout. Every single person who started the course completed that course and, and it, was, it continues to be part of that coaching process going forward. So um, just handing over to Andy, I think now to sort of reflect upon some specific outcomes in relation to that course. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, and yeah, just to, thought it'd be useful to give that summary um, of some specific outcomes um, for particular pupils um, and we'll call this um, people student A um, for the process of this um, and to give you some context um, student A is um, a nine-year-old um, with a global developmental delay so he experiences um, significant emotional and behavioral difficulties and the forms of his behaviors that can challenge that we see are like of hitting grabbing headbutting and hair pulling um, he's, he has severe communication difficulties in both his receptive and expressive language and is pre-verbal and he share, shares a class with six peers. Um, we were beginning to become concerned that the frequency and duration and severity of student A's behaviours that can challenge were impacting on his well-being and the well-being of the staff team and his peers and his family. Um, the behaviour was causing harm to staff and the worry was that his behavior might be directed toward other pupils in his class, some of whom aren't ambulant um, and could be easily targeted. Um, his behaviors that could challenge were also really disruptive to his peers who were beginning to become upset and scared of his behavior to an extent. So a, a functional assessment was carried out by our PBS team in collaboration with North, North Tyneside's Community Learning Disabilities Service, and they've got a PBS team of their own as well, um, in collaboration with HOME, obviously. Um, and his PBS plan was created in around October of 2022. Um, and school have worked closely with student A and his family in its implementation, meeting regularly to evaluate how things are going, um, to make amendments to the plan, uh, updating practice strategies that are most successful. Um, and within that, we, we completed a PERMA profile um, and used that to also inform his PBS plan, um, which included in the, in, in the green section, um, uh, an element of how to help how to help me it's written in the first person so uh, providing me with my own safe comfy space providing me with sensory activities and toys uh, help me understand and be prepared for transitions and change uh, provide me with opportunities to relax between activities in a comfy space uh, and provide me with routine and sequences of events and tasks and activities that can become uh, I, I can become familiar with we also knew that um there was an environmental need there so in terms of um, providing that structure and routine to sequences uh, to follow that remain consistent and familiar and to have an identified space um, to use when I need to. Uh, at first the successes were that there was um, an initial reduction in behaviours that can challenge uh, however by, by the end of the year it was felt further more targeted support had become necessary as student A's support staff were continuing basically to, to be injured um there was an identified skill and knowledge gap relating to the uh, translation of what staff were seeing and uh, hearing observing and their ability to recognize and accurately accurate, accurately record incidents of uh, behaviors that can challenge we hadn't uh, delivered uh, specific pbs training to the staff team in school at this point so um we decided that one of the pbs team of coaches uh, should be designated to work into that class team more extensively to aid with the accurate collection of data um, identifying any patterns in behavior 
uh, spotting triggers and uh, coaching the team in the best ways to support their student A. Uh, next slide, please. If you like Chris Whitty. <laughs> so um, what we did in response and why, um, the data that we collected uh, suggested that incidents were continuing across the day with a uh, limited discernible pattern. So with some guidance from, again, the PBS coach that was involved, um, some further changes were made. Um, we had a separate learning area um, created um, with an increased access to a separate low arousal learning space to ensure that student A had the best possible opportunity throughout the day to be in a much less busy place, uh, a potentially overwhelming environment. We also provided consistent familiar staff and limited this initially to two key people. A uh, good support practice was identified by the coach and this was modelled and exemplified so that expectations uh, for how to best work with student A were clear. Um, we prioritised the levels of demand um, in, into student A's day. So interspersing low preference and high demand activities with a higher frequency of low demand and high preference activities. Uh, we, we gained OT input for more, more targeted sensory strategies, so deep pressure and uh, a bean bag. Uh, spinning equipment and more access to rebound therapy that he loves and these were implemented uh, this is in the form of kind of a program of sensory activities that student a accesses and takes part in during the day to ensure he's getting the sensory input he needs uh, we gained salt input which included the increased use of uh, makaton signing um, he's kind of uh, got a, a specific way of, of signing and communication so this was explicitly trained to the staff um, and also the, the use of AAC, so he's got a vocal now um, on his iPad um, with a view to increase student A's ability to communicate his basic needs and wants without needing to resort to possibly uh, lashing out. Uh, so that's a total communication approach uh, with lots of or with low levels of language and uh, lots of visual support. These were implemented with much greater consistency. Um, physiotherapy input was gained uh, and this was put together to, to put together a program of gross motor movement activities to ensure that uh, student A was given regular opportunities to practice his gross motor targets, uh, his hydrotherapy goals, which again, something that's hugely enjoyable for him uh, and other EHCP outcomes. Uh, next slide, please. And so what were the outcomes? Um, the data that we're collecting continuously at the moment still indicates that the frequency and duration and severity of student A's challenging behaviour has decreased significantly. That's the, the, golden, the golden nugget there, isn't it, I suppose, the headline. And um, we can also suggest that student A be, uh, appears happier at school. He's experiencing far fewer instances of, of dysregulation. And we have uh, many more opportunities to build on his known preferred activities because he's calmer. A staff comment that they feel more confident to spot warning signs um, and be more proactive in supporting student A. And his family have noted differences in the way he presents at home. So he appears calmer, more content, and uh, complies with um, reasonable requests more agreeably. Um, and as a yeah, byproduct of that, his, his peers also are more relaxed in, in their learning too. The next slide. Fabulous. So, yeah, thanks, thanks, Andy. Just, just nice, nice to sort of hear a specific um, case in relation to, to sort of some of the outcomes um, for those focus individuals that that you were supporting. Um, so the the training didn't stop there. So we we did those training courses that we discussed on a previous slide, but actually one of the the key parts of this process actually is is to think about you know how we turn that training into into action into a into a strategy. I suppose for that for the school for that school setting um so so some ad additional days were commissioned right from the offset for that kind of implementation we've got three days available to us to use to sort of think about you know how we how we put this into practice going forward um and the first day that that we used of those three days we we focused in upon building the, the percy headley school implementation model so we had a day with all of the available PBS coaches and, and we, we brainstormed basically based, based on the information, based on the knowledge that, that people are gained through these, these processes. We, we pulled together our, our PBS implementation model 
thinking about sort of using this this tiered approach to PBS implementation, where we have this understanding that that PBS is for everybody, it's for every student within Percy Headley School, not just for those individuals who were engaging in the, the highest number of, of behaviours of concern. It's it's for all, and those universal strategies are so 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 crucial, sort of going forward. Because if you get those right, we're going to have less people who need those much more intensive interventions. So building that universal tier was really key. Uh, to, to us, you know, making sure that we had that a focus tier around actually how we support everybody within Percy Headley School and and PERMA, um, that the, the quality of life and wellbeing model of PERMA is has been very key to that. So we, our goal is that everybody has a PERMA profile and uh, that's developed in collaboration with them and and with other people who are key to them, so family members and and, and peers and and you know a range of individuals within that school setting. Um, and you know, thinking, making sure those those perma profiles evolve with those students, and and perma is part of the narrative within within that that setting as well. Uh, and then we thought about you know what those additional tiers of implementation might look look like, and what responsibility the coaches would take for those. So coaches have been allocated to classes within the school, and and are sort of leading on on these these implementing these strategies. We've, we've got some templates now. So we've got a, a two page PBS grab sheet, which incorporates a time intensity model. So a, a sort of arousal curve for each of those students, along with a, a really quick and snappy traffic light plan for those individuals. Um, and that's, that's along with a really focused action plan that comes from that PERMA profile with the understanding that you know, PERMA is a really important step in our, our PBS process and making sure that the environment is right and that well-being is addressed as well for those individuals. And we thought as well about, you know, what, what level of supporting system we're gonna need. So we've, we've thought about this, these practice workshops that are taking place for those individuals who fall into that more targeted tier. Those are taking place every half term, facilitated by a PBS coach to develop plans and review progress. So we, we've got that slightly more, more focused level of, of input. Whereas the universal students, it's, it's much, um, much less focused and much more PERMA focused. Uh, and then we're thinking about those intensive tiers as well. So those, those intensive students, those individuals who do require that higher level of support, what does that look like? And obviously they've gone through the process of developing their skills and being able to carry out functional assessments, which are going to be really key to this, this level. We've, we've got a, a, a nice clear template PBS plan that isn't 100 pages long. It's still concise and clear and, and easy for people to pick up and, and read and understand but it's a little longer than the two page grab sheet for the, the next tier down. Um, and we've watched, there's also much more of a focus on practice leadership within this tier. So team members within that coaching team, actually coaching you know, their fellow staff members and checking as well, making sure that actually what's in this plan is being implemented you know, within that setting. So we, we've got some templates for some of those procedural fidelity checks as well. And just you know, upping the level of, of practice workshop that takes place, so they're, not, they're going to be a little bit more regular for those individuals. And the other idea is, you know, if students are going to move up and down this 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 um, this tier, these tiers as they sort of move through their their lives, through their their um, experience within that school, um, and it's going to be adaptive. It's going to change and evolve as as it needs to. And we've got these criteria for, for what sort of suggests a student might need to to be allocated to each of those tiers and what level of support might be needed. So the idea with this was, you know, we've got all of these skills, we've got all of these, these resources available to us. We've got this amazing team of coaches who've worked so hard to, to continue to develop their skills. What do they do with it? And this is about, you know, really having a really clear system around how, they, how these resources are used, how these, how these skilled coaches can be utilized to, to benefit um, the students within Percy Headley School. So how's it going? <laughs> I think this is over to, to you folks again, isn't it? How, how's it all going off the back of, of what we've just been talking about? Yeah, well, as if, <laughs> as if I knew what, what you were going to say there. Um, yeah, this is over to my bit, yeah. De defined processes and procedures is, is, I think, the first thing to, to, um, to clarify. And in collaboration with PBS UK, I think we've now established school-wide processes that are really clear. There's much greater clarity for staff to understand the particular level of support and um, that may be required at each tier as you've previously outlined um we have an established strong behavior support team and a clearly recognized team that are 
in inverted commas, on the ground in terms of offering support for class teams. Uh, they're becoming more confident in functional behaviour assessment and how um, everyone contributes to that process. And they're building on their training to suggest interventions which increase quality of life. Um, so that's an established strong behaviour support team. Uh, we have linked coaches to classes and each class now has two BBS coaches attached to them. And they can support by uh, observations in the data collection systems um, and using their skills and leadership to motivate staff and provide guidance uh, for creating quality PBS plans or PERMA profiles. I think our priority has been the uh, PERMA aspect of things and that universal tier to kind of get those out for everyone. Um, and finally, we feel that um, intervention is quicker and more effective whereas previously there was no clear pathway and teams would sort of speculate about the causes of behaviour that's behaviours that challenge and now PBS coaches are the go-to people in school to advise on best practice uh, they provide leadership um, coaching staff alongside them in their work uh, enhancing the lives of the peoples that we support uh, this also accelerates the class team's ability in the creation and implementation of uh, strategies and behaviour strategies And then that's plus thinking about our next steps. And I think, again, this is over to you, Barry, isn't it now? So think about yeah, that. thank you. So the next steps for us at Percy Ellis School is for our PBS trainers to deliver the training to our staff team. Really on reflection, this is something that um, I wish we'd bought into sooner. If I was to do this again, um, I would definitely have delivered the training to staff uh, sooner and have purchased the training from PBS UK uh, sooner than, than we did. I believe it would have helped to build our staff teams understanding of the change, what we were changing uh, and why, which would have made um, the job of the coaches um, a bit easier than what it, it, it has been, not that it's been um, terribly difficult, uh, but we are where we are. And we're midway through developing the PERMA plans for all pupils and every pupil will have one of those in place. So we'll continue doing that until they're all complete. And with, PBS UK uh, support would develop the new the new plans, which Hannah's spoken about. And over time, what we will be doing is transferring our current behaviour support plans onto the new um, format. Two more consultancy days left, and our next session will be dedicated to further training around coaching for our coaches to support them in their practising conversations. It's a very difficult thing to do, coaching, so... And we decided to, to, to use a full day, just perfecting that even further. And the focus for our last day, that would be uh, defined at a later date and will be informed from findings for our monitoring uh, of the implementation of the project. To you, Hannah. Oh, and that's that's been really key. You know, we've not rushed this process. We've, you know, we've we're stretching those days out, aren't we? And and sort of thinking about how we can make them the most valuable as possible. And and yeah, our next session in a few weeks' time is going to be around around coaching. And really, again, it will be all upon actually how effectively we can embed some of these these processes and practices. Um, so just you know, finally to reflect upon, you know, this has been a really really positive experience um, certainly from my perspective and, and we've seen that there's been some really really um, promising outcomes so far for, for Percy Headley School as well we, we recognize we're at the beginning of that process but it's looking good at present it seems like it's working and it's, it's having an impact um, and it's just about you know reflecting why that is um, based on that experience because it, it's not always how it goes and um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you folks have had, had experiences where you've, you've tried really hard to get some of these things up and running and it's and it's been more of a challenge and I know that that we certainly have as well um, so just some of the key pointers really some, some of the key factors that I think we had in place that have had a, big, a really positive impact and, and the first one is actually about the realistic expectations um, both you know, from, from my perspective, but also more importantly, from Percy Headley School's perspective. So right from the very first meetings when we were discussing actually what this was going to look like, it was really clear. We didn't even need to say to these folks, it was really clear they understood that this is something that's going to take years. It's not something that you can just, oh, you know, this term, we're going to implement PBS and we're going to be at the finish line at, at that stage. It was this recognition that this is we're in this for the long haul and it's going to be a slow, gradual process. We don't need to rush it. We need to, to make it 
to get it right and to you know to use the resources we need and the timescales that, that are relevant to, to get things embedded positively. So I think having those expectations was really, really important from the offset. You know, we don't have, unfortunately, we haven't invented a magic wand yet that, that sort of magics up all of these, these fantastic outcomes. So, um, you know, 